How do you take a static character you've made and turn it into a movable, talking puppet? I have this illustration of a monster character I drew in Photoshop. So the first thing I need to do is separate the head from the body because I want the head to look realistic, pivoting at the neck and having the ability to be controlled separately. So here's my general group structure. I'll call the parent group plus front because this is a front view, and then I'll put two subgroups inside there, head and body. I'm going to go through all my layers and drag them into the correct group. If you have artwork that spans between the head and the body, now's a good time to split them up into two separate layers. So that's done, but before we jump into Character Animator, we need to add two invisible data points, or handles as we like to call them. Handles give Character Animator some extra information about how certain parts of our character should move. First, I want the head to pivot right at the neck, so inside the head group I'm going to make a new layer, select the Pin tool, make sure it's set to Shape, and add a single handle. I'll rename it Origin, meaning this is where this particular part begins. Second, I want the body to bend from the torso, so I'm going to make another new layer inside the body group, add another handle right at the waistline, and call it Fixed. Imagine we're pinning the character down here. Even if the rest of the body moves and bends, this part is going to stay still. Let's bring this monster into Character Animator and see how it looks. I'll fire it up from After Effects by going to File, Open Adobe Character Animator. Then I'll click Command-I on Mac or Control-I on Windows to import a new puppet and bring it in. I'll then click Add to New Scene down here in the lower left corner. Finally, I'll double click my face in the webcam to reset all the tracking dots and there we go. So now we have the basic foundation for a character. As I move my head around, the monster will bend, warp, and move as best it can to match my movements. Notice the head is pivoting at the origin handle I made and the torso is stationary since that's where I made my fixed handle. If I wanted to give movement to the arms, I could go back into Photoshop, create some handles on the hands, and rename them to Draggable. But I could also do this within Character Animator by selecting my puppet, selecting the body group, choosing the dragger tool, and adding handles to the hands here. Now if I drag around the arms with my mouse or my fingers on a touch base device, I can move them. Now that I've got the basics of body movement down, let's work on bringing the face to life. I'm going to start with the eyes. The first thing I'll do is isolate the eyebrows and name them left eyebrow and right eyebrow. We name them relative to the puppet's view, so right means the puppet's right side, not the right side of my screen. We want the eyebrows to be able to move independently from the rest of the head, so every time you raise your eyebrow, it doesn't also pull and raise your whole head along with it. To do this, I'll add a plus in front of each layer name, signaling that this is what we call a sub-puppet. Next, let's make a right eye and left eye group inside the head group and drag any corresponding eye layers in there. I want to end up with three layers, eyeball, pupil, and blink. So let's name these accordingly and make sure they're in the correct groups. Left eyeball with left pupil and left blink, right eyeball with right pupil and right blink. I'll add plus in front of the pupil layers because I want the eyes to move independently from the rest of the head. When I check out the monster now in Character Animator, its eyes should follow my own eyes. When I raise or lower my eyebrows or close my eyes, it'll do the same. As long as you follow this general eye structure, your puppet should follow your performance in the webcam. If your movements feel too extreme or too subtle, try twirling down the face properties on the right. Experiment with these until you get the right level of expressiveness. Back to Photoshop, it's time to add a mouth and let the monster speak. The mouth can take a decent amount of time to get right because you can have up to 13 different mouth shapes within this group. Since we're just getting started, I'm going to borrow and drag the mouth layers over from another character I've created. You can do the same. You can download a mouth and other puppet elements such as eyes for free as a Creative Cloud member. Check out the link on this page. When you drag a library asset in, just hold down Option on Mac or Alt on Windows so you'll get the full group and layer structure. If you don't like this hand-drawn style, Try redrawing and replacing each layer with your own style. Jumping into Character Animator, I can now see the monster's mouth change depending on what sound my microphone is picking up. With all these elements combined, I've now got a pretty compelling character. When I'm ready, I can record my full performance by pressing the red record button down here. When I'm happy with the take, I can go to File, Export, Scene, which will export all the visual and audio data I need in the form of a ping sequence and WAV file. I want to add some finishing touches, so I'll fire up After Effects and go to File, Scripts, 
new comp from character animator recording.jsx. I'll just select one of the images and the script will do the rest, giving me a new comp with the correct syncing and frame rate. Now I've got all the power of After Effects to put together a polished, professional looking scene. So congratulations, you've covered all the basics of making a puppet. Download the latest version of After Effects and apply these same steps to any piece of artwork to help bring it to life. There are plenty of extra, more advanced things we can add to our character later, but this is a great foundation to get started. Good luck, and thanks for watching.